Maybe you heard someone mention DSCR when talking about their latest real estate investment. Or maybe you heard it from a mortgage broker when referencing the minimum requirements for a loan. And you wondered, what does that mean exactly? Well, you came to the right place because in this installment of my Chalkboard Real Estate Investing Series, I will explain what DSCR stands for and how investors calculate and use it. Let's get right into it. The term DSCR stands for Debt Service Coverage Ratio. It is a financial metric used to evaluate a property's ability to generate enough income to cover its debt payments and to assess the risk and feasibility of a real estate investment. While it is one of the more obscure metrics, it's definitely one that you should become familiar with if you're going to be dealing with any commercial and non-owner occupied loans for your rental properties. Here's how it works. In order to calculate the DSCR, you'll need to divide the property's net operating income, NOI, by its total debt service, TDS. The NOI is the property's income from rent and other sources minus all of its operating expenses. Operating expenses include everything except for TDS, and TDS is all principal and interest payments owed to a lender for that particular property. When doing this calculation, you would typically calculate it on a monthly basis, but it comes out to the same ratio on an annual basis as well. Let's take a look at a quick example so you can get a better idea of what I mean. Let's say that you're looking at a four unit rental property with a two car garage. The apartments combined rent for $4,000 per month and the garage rents for another $200 per month. So the total gross monthly income for this property is $4,200. Let's say that the property's owner paid expenses such as taxes, insurance, utilities, maintenance, repairs, capital expenditures, and vacancy combined come to approximately $2,200 per month. In order to figure out the NOI, we would subtract $2,200 from $4,200 and the resulting number in this case would come to $2,000 per month. Let's say you're looking to finance or refinance this property and need a $360,000 loan. At a 25-year amortization and a 6% interest rate, your monthly mortgage principal and interest would come to $2,319. This would be your TDS in this example. Applying the DSCR formula, we would divide the monthly NOI by the monthly TDS, which is 2000 divided by $2,319, resulting in a DSCR of 0.86. Now you don't need to be particularly experienced in real estate to know that this is not a very good outcome from a pure cash flow perspective as you would have a monthly deficit of $319. And in fact, assuming these numbers are correct, there is zero chance you're getting a loan for $360,000 from a bank on this property. This is because in order for a property to break even and cover all of its expenses, including the debt service, the DSCR has to equal at least 1.0. But that's just to break even. Most banks will want to see a healthy cushion in your monthly cash flow over and above this number. Typically, the banks will ask for a minimum DSCR of 1.2 or 1.25. So in this example, it would mean that if the bank's minimum DSCR requirement was 1.2, the most that it would be willing to lend on this property would be about $258,000. The way I figured that out is by taking the $2,000 net operating income and dividing it by the bank's minimum DSCR of 1.2. This equals $1,666, which is the maximum principal and interest payment, the TDS, that the bank would allow you to have in this case. Once I have the maximum monthly mortgage payment, and I know that the loan terms are 6% and a 25-year amortization, it's just a matter of plugging the numbers into a loan calculator, like the one on bankrate.com, and playing around with different loan amounts until the monthly payment matches $1,666. The actual numbers for the NOI and the TDS will vary from deal to deal, but what's important is that you understand how to use them in calculating the DSCR. Also important is the fact that you really never want your DSCR to be lower than 1.0. If it is, it means that the property is going to be cash flow negative and also that you will not be able to get a bank mortgage on it unless you reduce the loan amount to the point where the DSCR increases to the bank's preferred minimum threshold. Obviously, as the amount of money you can borrow from the bank goes down, the amount of money you have to come up with out of pocket if you're trying to buy the property goes up. Similarly, if you're trying to do a cash out refinance, as with the BRRRR strategy, a lower loan amount also means that you may not be able to get all of the money you initially invested back out. 
Speaking of the Burr strategy, if you want to learn how you can make an infinite return using this strategy and how I have been able to grow from 9 rental units to 120 rental units in just 5 years, click or tap on this video on the screen and I'll see you there.